sell every day in a six by eight, whatever the size is, knowing that the truth was there and they blocked it, it's like it's such it's like a, a motivation to make you keep going, to make you keep the word out, to constantly put in people's minds and hearts, this is what really happened. This is what I know. When you're confident of what you know, then it makes you more zealous to go out and say, no, that's not what happened. And, and uh, to point out another thing, Jacob York confessed to it. He literally confessed. When I ran into him, um, so, okay, I ran into him in, um, in the West End. I ran into him, I'm like, a whole bunch of emotions at that moment went through my mind. And he walked into a restaurant, and I followed him, followed him in there. And I made eye contact with him. And he started running his mouth. Yo, the, he, you know, about the case. And I'm saying to him, I said, you, I said, uh, it, it was transcribed. It was online maybe a, a few years ago, maybe if the, if the uh, public needs to see it and read it again to find out exactly what was said. But in admitting that, I said, you know how the devil works. He said, I do. And they said, he, they, he admitted that they trapped him, that they had him in a corner and he couldn't. He was like going back and forth to make to make it appear as though he had sympathy, but I know his heart and mind that you can't you, you don't have sympathy because you would have came forth and set the record straight regardless whether um, whether how you feel you were going to sell your father crucify him for emotional vendetta that, that that possibly would change the next week or next month you you were okay with that and I knew he was lying, but in the confession I was able to get. A clear, uh, a clear idea or a clear listening, so I was able to bring it to the family to show he's definitely uh, coming over, appearing to come over, because obviously it hasn't happened. But him confessing was a way to say, "Listen, the world needs to know Dr. Malakazi York is innocent." to say one of the ways that you know that this conspiracy is definitely a conspiracy is because you have to take a look at how many of our people were approached originally to the point of saying be involved in this conspiracy how many of you actually got to the witness stand and how many of these alleged victims were people who testified on behalf of the defense you had eight so-called victims who testified on behalf of defense, on, on behalf of the defense, and the handful of individuals who actually testified on behalf of the prosecution, those who didn't recant, you, you also have to realize two of them were found to be perjurous on the witness stand, one of them was found to be perjurous to the grand jury, and three of them end up recanting. So you look at uh, a reasonable doubt. When you have 8 out of 13 victims saying it never happened and testifying on the part of defense, bringing you your reasonable doubt, and a man is still convicted, it can only be because of conspiracy, which is what we're seeing happen. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Um, what we're going to do at this time is we're going to take a couple questions. Um, before we go to the break. Again, if there are any questions from people here in mirror number nine, um, please let our technical staff know. And if you have any questions for those of you who are tuned in to WNUB, uh, please tap, type them in in the chat room and we'll do our best to address them. Go ahead, can we get our first question? Robert. Robert. These are questions from the online uh, viewers and as well as listeners. I uh, just have two. There were more, but uh, the panel touched on them and answered a lot of the questions that, that were pending. But one question is for um, Sister Farah, and the question is that the person that you were speaking about um, that had a relationship with your, with your younger brother or, or your brother, were they given an immunity agreement? during the case, if, or, why, or why weren't they prosecuted or arrested? Um, yes, 
the person, it was um, um, Nicole Ada Lopez. Um, I'm, I, know, I know a lot of people know her Ada as Ada. I just call her Ada. But um, it was her who was involved with my with my brother, and she was given immunity so that she couldn't be prosecuted for her crimes, and um, she could testify against the mass teaching. Okay. If I need any more elaboration. I guess basically that was that question. What what was that person given in the meeting agreement? Uh, next question is for the letter that you mentioned um, that was compiled by the children. Was that letter ever introduced into evidence? And would that have been helpful if it wasn't introduced into evidence to support the conspiracy? The letter would have been definitely helpful because the letter involved uh, a couple of the witnesses. And it wasn't introduced because on the raid that took place on May 8th, um, the, 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 they, they confiscated everything. They took the computers, they took the videos, they took cassette tapes, they took all our paperwork, and we were never given access to any of the paperwork. So it wasn't just the letters. It was our records because we also realized there was a RICO case involving money structuring. Our financial records were taken. Uh, 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 affiliation papers were taken as far as those who were part of the different uh, religious organizations. All of that was confiscated. So neither the letter nor the cassette tape um, that was made by one of the witnesses in that day and time admitting to exactly what this entire conspiracy was about was available to us because they took it and they didn't give us access back to our stuff. Even to this very day, we still have not been able to retrieve our belongings. All right. Well, with that question, we're going to go ahead to a break. Again, if you have any questions online, make sure you type them in the chat room. Or if you have any questions here, we will address them after the break. And we want to thank everyone for coming and also thank all of our viewers and listeners to the He's Innocent Show.